My name is Michael Gualpa. I'll be an incoming freshman. Hey, my name is Serge Gasana. I'm an incoming freshman. Hi, my name is Christy Yang. I'm an incoming freshman at the University of Minnesota. In our film, we would like to propose the idea of having a facility that focuses on the improvement lives of youth with disability. According to Hello Country Disabled Group, the definition of disability is a physical or mental condition that limits the ability to perform an activity in a manner within the range considered normal for human beings. It includes a person's movement, senses, or activities. In 2006, 1,623 children were incarcerated in Minnesota's juvenile justice system. Nationally, approximately 70% of youth in juvenile justice systems experience mental health disorder, whereas 20% experience a severe mental health condition. People with disabilities or disorders are often misjudged by the actions they, they take and they have to cope with what they're feeling. With disorders slash dis disabilities are often misjudged by the actions they take and they have to cope with their disability. Most of the time don't, they don't even know what they have and they struggle to f like, you know, how to cope with it and they, they sometimes lead to outbursts and, and in a report I have read that a 12 year old boy named Cody uh, was caught up in the juvenile justice system for getting in an argument with the students and hurting his teachers and yes it's, it's an insult but Cody uh, must have been going through his uh, mental and growth development while being diagnosed with dys dyslexia having to deal with bullying and with the disorder you have no you have no idea of could be really hard on a person and sending them off to some private or alternative or or the juvenile de detention system or justice system or even homeschool isn't going to make them better uh, but uh, but instead it hinders them from better being educated and opportunities such as college can even result them to hinders them from better being educated and opportunities such as college could even result them into obtaining more disorders especially like being incarcerated if they're sent to like the juvenile justice system one of the disorders that I did was Attention Deficient Hyperactivity Disorder. It's very common and almost 3 million people have it in, in America. And people with uh, ADHD uh, are known to have like mood swings, mood problems, and also behavior problems that they can't really control. What is depression? Depression is a brain disorder that affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. It can be emotionally and physically effective. It causes feelings of sadness and a loss of interest in activities once enjoyed. Not only that, it creates suicidal thoughts, feeling worthless, a change in appetite, and having a difficult time of thinking. According to American Psychiatric Association, 19 million Americans are depressed, and only one-third receives treatment. Treatments such as psychotherapy or medication. What usually causes depression is stressful events and a lack of parental support. The lack of parental support plays a big role in a child's life. According to a study conducted by U.S. National Library of Medicine National Institutes of Health, 47% of juveniles are affected by depression, rating from moderate to severe. The youth who are incarcerated in detention tend to have many risk factors for depression and psychopathology. Unrecognized and untreated depression potentially impacts the criminal course of youth, such as an increased recidivism. They will come back more into a juvenile. However, these depressed juvenile youth are a highly vulnerable group. They have an extreme risk for school failure, peer rejection, and violent behavior, which may have caused them to be arrested in the first place. The results in this study states that the relative risk of an elevated depression score was 3.91 times higher for youth in detention compared to youth in the community. 47% of adolescents had a mean score below 3, which meant that they described the caregiver supportive as sometimes or well, almost never. Not just that, but according to the National Conference of State Legislations, 65 to 70% of the 2 million adolescents arrested each year have a mental health disorder. 
which significantly shows the history of substance My abuse. My name is Corbin Lopenia, and I work in the, as the access consultant in the Disability Resource Center at the University of Minnesota. Um, I've been here almost a year, and I have learned so much in the past year. Um, so that's kind of me professionally. Um, I guess I really like to be outside. I have a service dog, so I spend a lot of time outside playing with him, um, hanging out with friends, you know, the normal stuff. So I have what we call a cerebral palsy, excuse me. So basically what that is, is some sort of um, damage to the brain before the age of two. So for me, <clears throat> I had a traumatic birth, and that um, led to the umbilical cord getting wrapped around my neck, lack of oxygen, mm -hmm. and then there you go. So um, the way I describe um, CP kind of affecting me is that my brain speaks English and the rest of me speaks French and a lot is lost in translation. Okay, so that means like right now I really wish I could be sitting still but my body won't listen to me. Um, same thing with my speech. My muscles just won't Move like they're supposed to. So then I sound a little, a little funny, you know. Um, yeah, I know, it's fine. But um, that kind of explains what um, one of my disabilities is. I also have um, some mental health um, conditions. So depression and anxiety are also things that I get to deal with every day. Woo Those are always fun. Um, so I think that in my job, I'm able to bring my own personal experiences with disability into the conversation, and it makes it um, it makes it so that I can relate quicker. So first off, um, as an access consultant here, I work with. Um, students, faculty, and staff that have some sort of disability or condition. Um, so my particular job is to identify what kind of accommodations they may need um, to help level the playing field in the educational arena. Well, first of all, I love working here. I think it's amazing um, that I get to show people with disabilities that they can have a job, they can be a part of society in whatever way works best for them. Um, I also hope that I show them by example that you can go as far as you want to in education, um, as long as it's realistic, of course. but. I have my master's in vocational rehab, and a lot of people are shocked by that because of my disability, and they make certain assumptions about me because of that. So what I love about working here is that I get to break those stereotypes every day. So for me, um, <laughs> Growing up, I used to say that everybody had a disability. They just didn't know what it was yet. Um, and I still kind of feel that way. Um, I feel like disability is such a negative word that I have tried hard to take it back and make it positive. So I have a motto that I live by, and it follows me both professionally and personally. And that motto is, beware of the bigotry of low expectations. So that means that even though you make assumptions about somebody, that doesn't necessarily mean 
that that other person fits those assumptions, but rather it says a lot more about the person making those assumptions. Right. So um, what I would like to leave you with is this idea of being proud of having a disability and that if you're not there yet, that's okay. Um, there is still a place, a place for you in our community. With everything that we have addressed, we have come to the conclusion that we want to use the money to build a facility centered around people with uh, disabilities or a disorder and to help them with everything they're coping with.